the first time I fell ill, um, uh, my wife uh, was very worried and, and took me straight to the A&E department of uh, Coleraine Hospital. Um, we had to sit in the waiting room where there was uh, about 14 people sitting waiting. Mm -hmm. And we had to sit for, a, I don't know, was it about half an hour? About, about half an hour before we mm -hmm. went into triage. When we went into triage and we gave uh, the relevant information the nurse asked for, um, she, we told her it was that I had chest pains. I was almost suffocating. I couldn't breathe and everything. And uh, from my wife's experience of people who was in the situation I was in, being a nurse herself, uh, she was very worried it was heart something to do with my heart and the nurse told us to go back into the uh, waiting room and uh, we went we went back into the waiting room didn't we and eventually I don't know I can't remember how long we had to wait for can you don't it wasn't long it wasn't too long the first occasion wasn't too long and we was taken can in I, can I what time of the day were you were you this in? this was uh, about half one in the afternoon okay mm -hmm. yeah he was referred by his GP the first time. Um, we got there about half one. Um, it wasn't too horrific that time, but it was the second occasion. Uh, we went in at midnight. Yeah. And well, can I, what sorry. I'm going to do is try. Let's let's do the first occasion, yeah, yeah. and then we'll talk about the sorry. second yeah. one. So so this was a day we were in the middle of the afternoon. Not that not that busy when you arrived. No. Is that right? No. No. Okay. Well. Um, I, I was put on a trolley in a bay, and uh, first thing, the nurses were very good. They um, immediately saw to me, they put me on a uh, uh, monitoring machine, took, you know, put in a, in a took blood and everything. Mm -hmm. But I was waiting on that trolley for, uh, how long was it, morning? About eight hours. About eight hours I was left on that trolley. Okay. And. Um, Eventually, a doctor did see us, and he turned around and told me that uh, I was sent to get x-rays, and uh, that, what, was there anything else that did at that time? Just an x-ray and that? And the ECG and the blood. I went, yeah, yeah ECG and x-rays, and the, the doctor came out and told me that uh, they, I had an enlarged heart, um, there was fluid on my lung, and there was a shadow. They wasn't sure. They weren't sure of what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just jokingly said, "Oh, it could be cancer." And she said, "Yeah, it could be." But I never took much heed to that. Um, then a doctor came and saw me and said, "We want to admit you uh, into the hospital." And this was on Friday evening by then. And they said. We haven't got any beds at the moment. We're not sure when we can get you up onto into the ward or wherever, you know, in coronary care. And I said to the doctor, I said, um, I said, what will be done? What will they do for me if, if you take? And the doctor said, well, we can't do very much over the weekend because there won't be no doctors available to, you know, you'll be kept in and, and kept, they will just keep an eye on you. And okay. I, I I did say to him, I said, I, I think I, I, I would like to go home because my wife is very worried, you know. Um, our dog was in the vets, you know, that's what brought it on, very ill. And I said, I'd rather be at home for the weekend with my wife. If nothing's going to be done. Sorry? If they weren't going to do anything. If they weren't going to do anything, you know, I'd just be sat in a bed. And I thought, I, you know, I'd only be worrying all the time and nothing could be done. So he allowed me to go home. But he didn't give me no medication. I had fluid on the lungs. It was, I was prescribed nothing. I was just discharged there and then. And uh, I, I came back to the hospital, uh, what was it, about a week later, well, uh, with chest pains. <clears throat> Can we stay with the first, the first time, and I will come to, come to the second one, if, if I may. Um, and I, my colleagues may want to ask a couple of questions. So you arrived about half one. You said yes. about eight hours, and then you had, what What time did you then, were you eventually, did you head home at? So how long? Well, he, he after he said, you know, he had let me go, 
he, 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 he just said, well, that's okay, you know, we'll let you go home, and that was the last of it. I just... Okay. And was that at half nine? Was that the eight hours, or were you, were you now in hours. kind of... It was about eight hours. Yeah, yeah it was about eight hours, hours, you know. Okay. And in terms of that period, were you given an expectation of... Did you know that you were likely to have to wait eight hours, or had you no I idea had no once? Idea. No idea, no. Okay, no, there, there was no, nothing that kind of said average waiting no, time? No, they didn't tell us nothing that time. Okay, and in terms of the facilities, did you need to get something to eat or drink? Nothing. There was nothing there, or that you didn't want no, to eat or no, drink no, anything? No, there was nothing we couldn't, there was nothing I could get. Um, did we get, eventually get a cup of tea, was it, that time? I can't remember the first. Okay. It was a breakfast. No, no, it was. It was no, no, we didn't get that first time. We didn't get nothing, you know. Okay, there's no vending machine then, or well, we we, we wasn't didn't told. Know where it, yeah, I okay. think you did ask about it, didn't you? Or was okay. it the second time? It was the second time. Though. Second time, no. Well, no, we didn't get nothing at all at the time. Okay. Any questions just on the first mm -hmm. of, of these? That's, that's clear. Thank you. Very yes. Much. <coughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. It's very clear. Thank you. Okay, so I think clear enough. You'd you'd had this. There was obviously a problem. It decided you were to go home rather than than stay. Or you wanted to go home rather than stay in hospital under observation. Do you want to just take us through what happened after that? Uh, before you then came back into emergency department, did you go and see? Did you go back to the hospital on Monday morning, or did you go to your GP? Or next morning, I, I was I was. I had a lot of chest pain and, that, and my breathing was really bad and uh, Janet took me straight to the hospital, to the doctors, our, our GP and... Um, so was this the next day? No, yeah, the, it, was the, it was on the Monday. It was, was on the Monday. Yes, I, I, I spent Friday, the weekend, yeah. you know, with okay. nothing, yeah. you know, but um, I, I was too bad for me to, you know, Janet said, well, I'll get you to see the doctors immediately okay. and she took me to the, see the GP. Who put me on um, and gave me an ECG and uh, put you on water tablets. Sorry, put you on water tablets. And and he put me on water tablets. So he did. And he did. He sent. He didn't send me to the hospital. He just put me on water tablets that time. You know, which did help. The water tablets were very good. They they helped my breathing. So how long? How many days? Or roughly, was it between the first time you'd gone to the emergency department and you had to go again? A week. A week. A week. It was a week. So just take us through then the second time and just again what happened. Well, the second time, um, we, was, was it, we were referred by the doctor, was we? No, or did no, we just no. go? We, went, just... We, went, we arrived there at midnight. I, we, Janet just took me there at midnight because I was suffering breathing problems and, and my, I was having a lot of chest pains. So Janet just took me straight to A&E and we went into the waiting room, didn't we? And... Uh, I don't know how, I can't remember and how long we were waiting. Half an hour before. Half, half an hour before. Again, was it crowded or empty there this time? There was quite a few people in there. There was, a lot, there was quite a few people in there, actually, you know. Okay, just take us through it then again. I, either one of you, what happened? No. Yeah. Well, Me too. Uh, we, we, we went into triage there after about half an hour. Um, and... Uh, Could you bring your microphone just a bit closer sorry. to you, Janet? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah no, no, that's great. Yep. Yeah. Yep. After about half an hour, we went into triage, and uh, we told the nurse that he got chest pain and breathlessness, um, and that he'd been in a week previously. And uh, we were told that uh, there were no beds, and to go back into the waiting room, there was a six-hour wait, which I wasn't happy with when he was breathless and had chest pain. Um, I told her, the nurse, and um, she just said to go and wait near the nurse's station, near the reception. Um, and then I had to ask another nurse, because my husband was still in pain, um, just said that he was in chest pain, and uh, she was able to get us the last trolley, apparently it was. But um, he was sat on that trolley for eight, eight hours before he even saw a doctor. Um, you had no pillows, did you? No pillows, no. no. I, I asked for, I requested a pillow because um, I, I was, because I, I suffer from arthritis, you know, and I'm on medication for it. I found it extremely uncomfortable. I had to keep getting off the bed because I, I couldn't get comfortable. 
and eventually Janet made me a pillow up out of her, her coat and a towel she had with her. You know, something to just try, but it, uh, nothing was done. The nurses were running about. What they did do was very good when they did, you know, see me. Uh, I mean, I can't afford nurses, but there was only three of them we could see that was on at the time. And we never saw a doctor at all around anywhere. I never saw one walking around the A&E department at all. We were actually told that there was only a junior doctor on that night. Yeah, there was only one junior doctor on at night, and we never saw that doctor at all. It was in the morning, uh, around about half eight, that the doctor eventually came up to see us. And we, I was given, um, I was given tea and toast. I was offered tea and toast at that time. And no sooner had I been given that, I was told I had to go in for uh, x-rays, which I did, which so I didn't get my tea and toast. After all that waiting, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it, uh, I must be honest though, uh, during that night, uh, we were offered a cup, didn't we? Did I ask for one? Was it that night? No, no, that, that, during the night I went to the vending machine and it wasn't working. Right. Um, I looked around, but some other patients and relatives told me where there was a water machine, but. Yeah. Uh, but there's nothing else all night. Um. Were you, were you in pain throughout the night, or did, oh, did you get some pain relief, or did they...? No. Did I, was that the night I did ask for pain relief? Was that the yes. third time? Yeah. You got no pain relief, did you? No. no. Uh, and I, I was on Because he hadn't medication. seen a doctor, so yeah. they couldn't give any medication. No, couldn't give any medication at all anyway. Okay, and then what happened after they, by, when you finally saw somebody at, at kind of half past eight in the morning the next day? What was it, darling? I don't remember. Um, they, uh, they admitted into Conry Care, but what time was it you went up there? Did you say it was oh, about midday you went to yeah, Conry Care? Yeah, I was about 12 hours on the trolley before I eventually, you know, I, I eventually got up into the ward. So and that was in a... And that was you. You were admitted to the Causeway Hospital. Then. Yes, I, I was admitted upstairs into coronary care, and uh, but I mean, I, I'd, I'd requested painkillers and, and other stuff. And the doctor did say he would get the nurse to get me some, didn't he? But the nurses, they couldn't. Well, they, whatever. I didn't get it. Janet eventually, you went home and got. Janet went home and got my prescribed medication and, and brought a, I think you brought a flask for me, didn't you, mm -hmm. during the night? Mm -hmm. Because there was nothing, I couldn't get no medication and some of the medication I have to take on a regular basis, you know, I can't miss it because, yeah, you know, it's, it's pregnancy alone and other stuff. And, and did the nursing staff, were they aware that you had kind of other medication that you needed to take did, around so. arthritis and, and any other conditions? Well, I wasn't there that night. It no, was in I, I, I said, I asked, um, I said I'm prescribed this medication and I asked if it's possible to get, you know, because it's so uncomfortable. And uh, like painkillers, which is unprescribed as well, and I'll get it for you, but we didn't get nothing. So they actually said it was a, yes, you could have this medication, but then for whatever reason you didn't get no, it. No, I didn't get okay, nothing. No, uh, um, okay. And then just finally for me, two, how long did you then stay in, in the Causeway Hospital once you were admitted? Yeah. Five, five days I was in, in okay. there, you know, I was in the Causeway. And how are you now? Just, just in terms of, in terms of the... Uh, have you had to go back to the emergency department well, there since was a then? Third, there was a third occasion then because he was sent home, but um, he was awaiting all relevant tests <coughs> as an outpatient. Um, he was told that um, he needed a dye test, um, but there was a six to eight week waiting list. Um, but it was um, a couple of weeks later, um, he went to the GP again with chest pain and breathlessness and uh, he was admitted again. He went again to A and E um, on the second of June, and we got there about half past one. And that occasion, um, he wasn't in a bay at all. He was in the trolley in the corridor. Again, there were no pillars, were there? No, I requested um, pillars, but no. he was in the tr in, in the corridor. And then, uh, if somebody needed to go by in the trolley, we were sort of moved around and 
just shifted about. Um, but you were told when you arrived at half one-ish that um, it'd be kept the night in A&E because there were no beds at all in the hospital. No. So he was um, informed he'd be in A&E all night. That night, that, 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 that night um, they, the ambulances were coming to and fro. I was sat in, in a bay right near where the check-in desk is where the no, nurses... No, no, you, you weren't in a bay at all the third time, no. darling. Oh no, I wasn't. You were in was the I? corridor, yeah. Yeah, but we was. Uh, I wasn't put on a. Uh, on the, oh, on no, the third it was time. The third time. Yeah. Third time. Just Second take it through again. Sorry. Just how, how long then? So you arrived at one thirty in the afternoon. They said it would be all night, and did that turn out to be right or? Um, you were moved to uh, medical assessment about half four in the morning because there were no beds on coronary care. Um, during that time. Yeah. that you were in. Um, he didn't receive his evening medication. He was offered a sleeping tablet, but as he was in the middle of the corridor and it was so no noisy and everything, yeah. you just... Yeah. I didn't, um, I didn't mention on the second time, but that was a time when you were sat with me and they brought in a young man on a bed, the ambulance, and that young fellow was... Richard, sorry, move your microphone just a little bit closer sorry. to you, because I think... They, they was, um, I was sat in a bay uh, this time before that, and I was watching all that was going on, and the ambulance brought in a young man on a, on a stretcher, about 15, with his mother, and Janet was sat with me, and uh, that poor that young fellow was starting to be sick, and Janet instinctively jumped up and, and got a, a, one of the bowls that you get, and she rushed over to uh, assist him, you know, and I, I was pretty upset about seeing that. So mm -hmm. I was because there was no one there to assist that young fellow. The ambulance men, mm -hmm. they were rushed off their feet. They were up checking him in at the time, so they couldn't see what was going on. And there was no one else around to, mm -hmm. to assist that young fellow, was there? No. You know, and, and then later on in the evening, they brought in a couple of a young man and a young woman, he was absolutely covered in blood, rushing about the ward, and she was waving her arms about, shouting, and you know, I mean, <laughs> they eventually they did have to give her something, didn't they? To, because, uh, but he was running about, blood everywhere, all over, covered in blood. Do you think they were under the influence of Sorry? Drugs or alcohol, or what, what, uh, yeah, what was the issue? I, oh, oh, yeah, they was definitely on, you know, whatever. Like, it wasn't okay. just alcohol. I think it was drugs. It looked very, you know... Okay, yeah. <coughs> can, can I ask you, then, just on your third occasion, again, did you need pain relief? You, you offered you the sleeping tablet, and that was all you, you got. You were there from 1.30 in the afternoon till 4.30 the next day before you were admitted. Yes. Uh, were you able to get anything to eat or drink no, during nothing. that time? No, I didn't get nothing, did I? I think you got a post. Oh, I, yes, correction. Uh, round about, uh, I think it was about half five, six. It was round about half five, six. I was offered a bowl of stew, which I was glad to get, and some bread and a cup of tea. I did get that, I must be honest. I almost wouldn't forget that. Okay. And just my um, final two questions for me, and I shall let my colleagues ask. In terms of how you, you know, how you were treated by nurses and doctors, etc., yeah. when you were when you you described how it was very difficult because people were clearly rushed off their feet and there weren't many staff there or didn't appear to be that you could see. When you did have an interaction with staff, you said the nurses had treated you very well. So you're in, how you were treated by the staff in terms of when you did have an interaction, how was that? Well, very good. They, they, you know, I mean, you, you could actually see that, that, you know, they did what they could. They spent as much time as they thought as they could because they had to rush off to do somebody else, you know. But they did do whatever they could for you, you know. I, I, I certainly, there was compassion. Yeah. I this, felt that yeah. from this, the nurses, definitely. This is my final question. Um, no. <laughs> With that experience, and I'm asking this to both of you, perhaps you can answer both as the person who was needing the treatment and the person who was there as the loved one. What what would have happened, you know, what would you have liked to have happened differently that would have made a difference to you in the experience? What are the things that if you were now talking to the person who was running the accident and emergency department would have made the experience different or better? Maybe start with you, Richard, and then Janet, maybe you. 
Well, I personally would like to see um, I'd like to see more staff uh, and doctors at a patient level because I think that's where uh, you know I honestly believe that things would have been a lot better for me and maybe you know not a, there wasn't one pillar at any time in the A and E department we don't keep them they told us and. Uh, I, I thought that wasn't, you know, that was, is extremely uncomfortable. And I, I, I even told my doctor last, a week, two weeks ago, I had to be sent by my heart failure nurse because I'm on, uh, what's it, Bernie? Telecam. Tele, telecam, you know, and they wasn't happy with my, you know, morning results when their blood pressure or something was wrong. And I was sent straight to the doctor by my nurse who keeps care in Colerain Hospital, which is extremely good. And the doctor said, oh, I'm going to have to send you to A&E. And, I, and it, it suddenly dawned on me, you know, I hadn't thought about it. I said, doctor, I, I don't want to go to A&E. I said, don't send me to A&E. Is there anything else that can be done? And I suddenly realised, you know, that's not how I should be feeling. You should be wanting to go to A&E because you'd be looking forward to getting some help and assistance to get rid of you know, or whatever, because it was suspected I'd take suspected parts, take off, whatever, I don't know. And uh, I suddenly realised, you know, it's not a place I want to be. Uh, and he said to me, I'll make, I'll write a letter and you will go straight into the ED department, emergency department, don't go to triage at all. And I'll put this letter so that they'll attend to you straight away. And it was during the day and it was it was sufficient. I was quite happy with that, you know, the the treatment and the and the efficiency I was dealt with. But I, I suddenly realised um, I wouldn't want to see other people. I I, I consider myself quite fit and healthy, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people who are even younger than me who are not as fit and healthy, and if they had to sit on a bed for 12 hours with no assistance, no, nothing to drink, nothing offered, you know. I mean, that makes a lot of difference, you know. Psychologically, it, it is traumatic as well as extremely painful. I, th I felt. And I, I wouldn't want to go through that experience again. If I have a heart failure again and Janet has to take me, I'm dreading what would have happened to me. I'd just sit on a bed again. I, I wouldn't want that. It, during the day, they had a lot of staff on, which was good. But as soon as it cut the evening staff, there was nobody. No. And I felt that was really a shame that anyone, especially us, including myself, should have to go through that. You know. Okay, thank you. And Janet, from your point of view, as the person who was there on a number of those occasions, is it, again, I assume for a second I was the, the person who could make things happen or whatever. What would you be saying to me in terms of what would have made a difference or what you think needs to be done? Well, um, um, I think first of all, for his comfort, I mean, there were no pillows or anything mm -hmm. in the A&E department. Um, I wasn't happy that it was only a junior doctor that was on and he wasn't seen for eight hours. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, you did. Well, you were worrying because we didn't know what was wrong, didn't we? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they can't materialise beds in the hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, they can't materialise trolleys because they 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 know trolleys left people with sat in chairs and and everything. Um, they were suffering. Mm. You could see. Them. Mm. Okay. No, no, that's fine. Mm. Marion, would you like to ask anything? I've, I've only one question. Richard, you, you had said there was compassion from the nurses, and you were specific that there was compassion from the nurses. Is, do, do you have any view on how you were treated as an, in an individual way by other professional group, groups? Well, by the doctors, do you mean by the doctors? Yes. Oh, the doctors, they, they come in and... and they could only give you what information they were, they got from my, you know. But they, as far as I'm concerned, you know, there were, there wasn't uh, a consultant of any sort there. Mm -hmm. But there, you know, 
with with what knowledge the doctors had, they they, they I mean, I felt confident enough that they was going <coughs> to give me the right treatment, whether I had to wait another eight hours or or because it's, it wasn't in their hands, but they did give me the information I felt felt would would help me to know where I'm going, what's happening to me. You know, I can't I can't complain about staff, and I wouldn't. You know, it's not they didn't they were very good actually. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't have any questions. You've been very full. It's been very helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, Rich and Janet, that's really helpful. It's crucial to this inquiry that we hear from people who've had um, direct experience of A&E. Um, uh, it's, it's really important and valuable to us. So thank you very much for taking time to come today.